Australia's productivity growth flatlined in the March quarter and putting aside the pandemic, it's remained flat for the better part of a decade. This is causing headaches for the government and the Reserve Bank, which are both trying to get labour productivity moving forwards again. One government solution has been to introduce the Future Made in Australia Act, which is designed to stimulate the manufacturing sector and businesses which are focused on the energy transition. But there are fears this is a return to protectionism. I caught up with Alex Robson, the Deputy Chair of the Productivity Commission, a little earlier. The latest uh, quarterly bulletin we put out, you're right, it said that um, uh, we found that uh, productivity over that quarter had been flat, but it's been uh, a problem that's been around for a while. It's been flat over the last year, and actually the level of productivity in Australia now is around its um, uh, 2015 to 2019 average. So this is a, a, a problem that's been around for a while. So what, what are the main strategies you can do here to try and get productivity back on track and get the economy really humming again? Yeah, so productivity is output per hour work. So it's all about working smarter, not about working harder or working longer. And so the things that can improve productivity um, across Australia are things like the recommendations we made in a big report last year. We made 71 recommendations around competition, dynamism, uh, openness, education, data and digital, and getting the transition to net zero right. Um, so these are all things where if we implement productivity enhancing policies um, over the medium term, we can uh, start to work smarter uh, rather than harder or longer. In your recent quarterly bulletin, you flag there are some areas which can improve, mainly the non-market sector, which I think I understand is things like education, training, healthcare and social assistance. So where's the opportunity here to improve productivity? Yeah, so that's right. So what we've seen in Australia is um, over the last year, although aggregate productivity has been flat, it has increased in the market sector where um, goods and services are, change, uh, are uh, exchanged for market prices. In the non-market sector, as you mentioned, things like healthcare, education, things where uh, they're either provided by government uh, for free or with a large subsidy, uh, we saw productivity actually go backwards by 2.2% over the last year. And so there's opportunities there to really uh, improve the quality of those services, um, funding arrangements uh, and innovation in the public sector across all of those areas. Yeah, you mentioned productivity is about working harder, not uh, smarter, not harder. Look, the recent monthly unemployment numbers for May showed the jobs market is still pretty tight in Australia, but hours worked actually fell. So how do you get employers to start building up the hours worked again in our economy? Yeah, so what we've seen over the last year is actually, yeah, hours worked have fallen in aggregate, but in the in the non-market sector, hours worked have increased by 5.5%. Um, so there's been a very large increase in number of hours worked in areas like healthcare, social assistance, childcare, uh, things like the NDIS. Uh, and so we're seeing a big growth in hours in, in those areas. Um, but, you know, the vast majority of economic activity is undertaken in the private sector. And so um, we need to have policies that encourage uh, hiring uh, and new jobs. Um, but the labour market is very tight. Uh, we've got low unemployment and it, uh, although vacancies have started to fall, it is still a relatively tight labour market. Um, so it's a struggle for employers to be able to get the workers that they need um, uh, and the productive workers that they need in this environment. But when you take a few steps back, would you say overall one of the underlying trends we're starting to see is a bit of a slowing in labour demand in Australia? Is that kind of a byproduct of our GDP growth being pretty weak at the moment as well? Yeah, so labour demand has started to slow, but the market uh, for workers is still very tight. And we see that in the productivity numbers, actually. So uh, every additional worker that is employed and, or every additional hour worked in that environment um, you're in a situation where unemployment's very low. Uh, you might get um, inexperienced workers coming in or workers that need a bit of on-the-job training. And that human capital takes a long time to build up. Uh, and so in both the market and non-market sectors, um, that's why that's one of the reasons why we see this cyclical um, pattern in productivity and it's, it's flat over the last year, is that um, you know, the extra workers that are coming in at this stage of the cycle uh, are not as productive as the workers that were already there. 
This week, the government have introduced the Future Made in Australia Act to Parliament, and part of it involves providing subsidies to certain industries around the country. Uh, how much of a risk could this be to productivity, having businesses that could potentially be reliant on subsidies to keep operating? Well, look, we haven't analysed um, that spe those specific policies at the Commission. Um, we do put out every year uh, a trade and assistance review where we um, just track uh, the amount of assistance that's provided to industry. And so these measures will appear uh, in coming years in that publication. Uh, we do have a general um, a view at the Commission, though, that uh, you know, although the rest of the world is engaging in more and more industry policy, for a country like Australia, where a small open economy, there are risks in us trying to match um, that huge spending in the US and Europe and China and elsewhere. Uh, and so we do have to be careful um, that we uh, respond appropriately uh, in general to uh, those industry policy developments around the world because it can, can start to look like um, protectionism in some instances. Yeah, I guess the government's argument is we need to compete with these other big nations around the world that are doing the same thing. So they're kind of in a difficult position as well. Yeah, and that's why we have called um, for careful cost-benefit analysis of measures like this. I mean, there are genuine concerns around national security, uh, response to uh, net zero, vulnerable supply chains. Those are all legitimate concerns, um, but they all play out differently across different industries, uh, and in relation to different industry policies around the world, and they each require a very careful and hard-headed assessment about whether the benefits exceed the costs. You did mention artificial intelligence at the beginning, but it's pretty clear Aussie businesses are starting to explore the benefits of it, but it can obviously improve productivity a lot. But how do you get the balance right to prevent mass job losses across various different industries? Well, we think that there are um, big opportunities for artificial intelligence um, for improving productivity across Australia. Um, I think the best approach is to uh, you know, have the regulations in place that we already have in a lot of cases to deal with um, what's coming uh, and let the jobs market really play out. I mean, those decisions will be made by individual businesses across Australia. They'll assess whether um, you know, the benefits of AI outweigh the costs and it's really the key is to have a dynamic, competitive and open economy to um, take advantage of all of those upsides. And just finally, what does the recent surge in inflation mean for future productivity growth? Surely it's going to result in businesses increasing their prices again and in theory it should reduce productivity even more, shouldn't it? Well, I think you know, there is a link between uh, productivity and real wage growth. It's a very um, close link. And real wage growth, if you think about it, um, that is really the cost of living challenge that people are facing at the moment. If their wage is going up by more than inflation, they're getting a real wage increase and they feel as though their living standards are rising. Um, whereas if the opposite is true, they're going backwards. And so what we think is that uh, you know, the key to all of this cost of living challenge is to have uh, you know, productivity enhancing policies in place that will allow individuals to work smarter, not harder or longer, uh, and reap the benefits um, that productivity gains uh, can you know, enjoy right across the economy. Well, Alex Robson, Deputy Chair of the Productivity Commission, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you, good to be here.